Oracle is going ARM-based instances. Oracle, the company behind Spark, has and has most of their uh, most of their cloud on Intel is is going ARM. Now, I don't want to say they're moving off of Intel or you know completely abandoning Spark with this move, but they they opened general purpose ARM instances through a small company called Ampere. And the Ampere lineage goes way back to Applied Micro, uh, which was acquired by Maycom, which was acquired by Ampere. Uh, and then uh, add and sprinkle on a bunch of uh, ex-Intel uh, executives and, and engineers. And here we have what I think is Ampere, Ampere to me is the first credible data center product that they've uh, come out with. I mean, it's a freaking beast. Uh, the thing is 80, uh, 80 cores, uh, and by the way, um, it's 80 cores of predictable performance, uh, which is it doesn't use hyper-threading, and that's really important to uh, companies like Oracle Cloud and even AWS uh, with them doing uh, the Graviton too, because um, hyper-threading is great, but it's not a one-for-one. -one. You're not getting a core uh, for, for free there, and sometimes you have what's called noisy neighbor, where uh, two instances are fighting each other. And the cool part, what Oracle did, is you can sign up for one core, okay, at its lowest level. Uh, and I, I absolutely uh, love that. Uh, I also like the way that uh, Oracle has pulled in the security uh, uh, point of view from having dedicated uh, cores. And I think price performance is going to be hard uh, to beat uh, right now. Now, I don't feel like Oracle is just positioning this as a low-end play, right? Uh, this is, I would say, my gosh, all, it's going all the way from lower-end general purpose to really intense workloads that include AI inferencing and high-end scientific application uh, support. So, uh, this, in addition to Graviton 2, Daniel, from AWS, I feel like is the real proving ground for ARM and cloud as general purpose. And, you know, ARM has been for a decade inside of storage and inside of networking and then even inside of um, uh, AWS's uh, offload layer Nitro, right? Uh, but this is the first big tests, two tests, uh, one here with Oracle and the other one that AWS, I think, will will make a, a huge determinant. Now, the other thing I really like that nobody's really talking about is this is the first big enterprise play we're talking about here because you have Oracle workloads uh, work running on top where normally for Graviton 2, you're really looking at, at cloud native. So... I feel like this is one more checkbox for ARM, and even though it's an Oracle Cloud, by the way, Oracle Cloud, a customer is on-prem and it's hybrid, is the first big test for ARM uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the enterprise. <sighs> Got it, absolutely. Well, we'll share our op-ed. Uh, Ron Westfall from our team did a pretty ex uh, you know, explicit one. You covered a lot of the ground. He basically, you know, his take was that, uh, you know, OCI is emphasizing, okay, that customers are going to build their virtual machines with more precision um, and they're going to have more flexibility and be able to optimize their costs. That's the whole story that Oracle is telling. Now, whether that's true, um, what I will say about that is that the overall perspective is that most cloud providers are going to have an ARM offering. It's either already happened like you mentioned with AWS, with Graviton, Alibaba, Microsoft has already declared its intent. Um, and if it hasn't, you know, you look at Google, you look at now with Oracle doing it. I mean, there aren't a lot of cloud providers left that aren't in this space. And I also think it's, you know, everybody's de-risking to some extent. They're de-risking if this does take off. Um, you know, Pat, I'll tell you, all joking aside, even Apple uh, going to ARM and M1 created some level of validation. And I know we're talking PCs versus data center. It's not the same thing, but it's a fact that you start to see companies say, we can do it. We right. can offer this variant. We can potentially use it to create ASICs that are really going to fit certain re requirements. 
as we start to see things tied together with the separation of, of types of workload for general purpose or for uh, GPUs, and of course, with all the advent and onset of DPUs in the data center, we're starting to see a lot more flexibility in how every semiconductor is designed and for what workloads they're for. And Oracle is going to participate. Uh, you and I have been on this show more than a few times saying essentially, don't count them out. Don't count Oracle out. It's Gen 2 cloud is a whole different beast than it's Gen 1 cloud, and it is more competitive. And this is one example of the company saying, we are going to come to the table. We are not going to miss a wave of innovation that's going on. And this is one approach that we have to address that wave. So um, good, on or good on Oracle. I don't think x86 is in any trouble at the moment. But I do think having the ARM option is going to be a popular sentiment across the cloud providers over the coming couple of years. Yeah, it will. And uh, I'm uh, waiting to see uh, Intel's new design and architecture uh, as well uh, as they go uh, as they go modular, which will allow them to do more uh, piece parts. Uh, you know, it's like, hey, you don't want hyper threading? OK, here you go. Here's a, here's a core uh, for that. You want a different I.O.? Hey, we can do that. We're going to put it together on Fovros. And it's not going to cost uh, $27 million to, uh, to tape that thing out. Uh, 